Roger brought the children over, and when he saw the two of them behaving so intimately, he instantly felt jealous. He sat down by Blair's other side and took her other hand. Blair raised both hands, looking to the left and right, caught between laughter and tears as she said, How am I supposed to eat when you guys are doing this? I'll feed you, Roger immediately replied. Rex was simple-minded and immediately let go of her hand. When he heard Roger's words, he felt upset, but he didn't feel jealous. Right now, what he had gotten had surpassed all of his past wishes. What was there for him to be dissatisfied about when he could watch over his beloved his entire life and get his feelings reciprocated? Blair threw Roger a reproachful glance and then secretly cursed him for having a glib tongue. However, she felt very happy inside. After a while, Stephen came back, bringing Catherine, who had woken up from her nap. Seeing that both sides next to Blair were taken up, he frowned slightly. He then walked over behind her and sat down. Have you eaten? Blair turned and took Catherine from him, asking. When she saw Catherine's mouth twitching, she knew that Catherine was hungry. She raised her head and looked around the surroundings. Roger and Rex instantly turned upright on both sides, using their bodies to shield her from other gazes. There was a big tree behind her and no one saw anything. Therefore, Blair removed her clothes, feeling assured. What she didn't know was that there was another pair of eyes on the tree. The action of the female under the tree caused the gaze on the tree to go into a daze. Lucius washed off the blood on him and didn't wish to mingle in such a lively scene. However, knowing that Blair would come, he quietly followed behind her. After they chose their spot, he climbed up onto this big tree with great difficulty, watching from afar. He didn't expect to see such a scene. Him looking down from a high vision made him see things even clearer. Lucius felt as if blood was starting to flow out frantically from his wounds that had previously stopped bleeding long ago. The blood in his vessels was seething. He had his fill of water when he was cleaning up, but now his throat felt even drier than when he had almost died of thirst in the desert previously. He felt as if there was a seething river in him, or as if there was erupting lava. However, his body was stiff as a rock, not moving in the slightest. In terms of concealment, it was hard to find someone stronger than Lucius across the entire land. All the males present didn't notice him, but Blair seemed to have faintly noticed something. She suddenly thought of Lucius. Looking at the packed campfire side, it was extremely hard to find someone amongst the crowd. Blair looked at Stephen, hesitated for a moment, then asked Rex softly, Did Lucius not come? Is he all right? Rex said, He has suffered some injuries, but his life isn't in danger. Don't worry. Blair patted her chest and said, That's good, then. She then looked around again, suddenly feeling a bit of heartache for Lucius. He was by himself and didn't have any friends or brothers in the village. He wouldn't come to such an event, right? The thought of him staying in the tree hole alone to take care of his own injuries was sad. Fine, she'd go look for Alex later to get him to check out Lucius's injuries. At the mention of Lucius, Rex recalled something and smirked coldly, saying, Turns out that Jameson didn't just set his eyes on you. He has even set his eyes on Stephen as well. What? Blair was baffled. She looked up at Stephen only to see his usually cold expression now filled with fury. He was so enraged that his face was a little distorted. What on earth happened? Blair asked anxiously. However, Roger sounded very interested, urging him to continue. How is he planning on scheming against Stephen? Stephen looked coldly at Roger, causing the latter to immediately shut up. His golden eyes moved around as he gloated. In this battle, Jameson kept on dealing killing moves toward Lucius, but was very forgiving toward Stephen as if he was scared to harm him, Rex said. 
Blair's eyes opened wide in surprise. Her gaze toward Stephen instantly turned strange. That couldn't be. Did Jameson take a fancy to Stephen? Although Stephen was very beautiful and effeminate, his character was clearly that of a dominant top in a relationship. Stephen instantly felt weird. If he knew what Blair's guess was, that weirdness would probably be worse. This matter wasn't hard to understand. The reason Jameson wanted Blair was to steal her body. It would be a matter of fact, even if he were to steal one more. When Rex heard Stephen's words, he instantly understood. So did Roger. His gloating instantly turned into fury. Blair wasn't from the same world as them. Although she was smart, she had never thought of using soul crystals to revive anyone. This resulted in her being the only muddled person now. Seeing that she was in a daze, her eyes gleaming with intention yet a strange gleam, Rex explained, The reason Jameson wants to catch you must be to revive Christine. And he's a rootless beast. Even if you were to become Christine, he still wouldn't be able to continue the affinity with her. By chance, Stephen is powerful. Thus, he sets his eyes on his body as well. Blair was stunned for a moment. Then her face turned pale. She was clearly given a fright. That can't be. I'm still alive, so how is he going to let Christine take over my body? Moreover, Christine's body is still preserved perfectly. Blair shook her head and retorted. Furious, Roger snuffed hot air from his nose. Why can't that be? If males are pressured too much, they'd risk their lives even if there's only one hint of hope. If you're alive, he'll kill you first. His mate died several decades ago, so how could her body still be used? It must have failed, so he suddenly came to get you. Roger's guess was pretty close to reality. Blair's body collapsed. She immediately thought of how Jameson still wanted to possess Stephen's body, and fury suddenly rose in her heart. Despicable! Even if I were to die, I won't let him get his way. Stephen's viciousness instantly dissipated, and he pulled Blair into his arms, glaring at her angrily and saying, Who'll allow you to die? Blair was given a shock, sticking her tongue out and saying, I just said it in passing. I really can't stand the way he grabs and seizes by force. Stephen stroked her back, which was covered with his snakeskin. All the females who had appeared in his legacy had died. What he was the most scared of was for something to happen to Blair. Therefore, he was especially sensitive to Blair taking her life lightly. After patting her and covering her body with his scent, Stephen finally felt a little more assured. He said in a gentle voice, You aren't allowed to say such foolish things. With us around, you'll live forever. Blair broke out laughing. Then wouldn't I become an immortal old monster who never ages? What's so bad about that? Stephen said without giving it any heed. Even Roger and Rex didn't find his words arrogant. Blair accepted things after thinking about them. That was right. In this world, the strong were revered. They could live on forever, and the green crystals were the miraculous medicine that could extend lifespans. Taking green crystals could allow one to maintain their peak capabilities, which would allow them to continue to get stronger. As long as they weren't defeated, they'd never fall. At the thought of green crystals, Blair suddenly thought of how she was still holding on to some of Lucius's green crystals. She should go visit him personally later and return the green crystals to him. The surface of the food is done roasting. I'll carry Catherine. Blair, eat up quickly. As Rex said this, he took Catherine from her. Roger immediately prepared roasted meat for her. Blair broke free from Stephen's arms and blocked in front of him, saying, You just sit behind us. 
Stephen smiled, and the feelings of disgust he felt from Jameson dissipated a little. We managed to push Jameson back this time around, killing a large portion of his tribesmen. He should also understand that we aren't to be trifled with. Roger said proudly, while feeling jealous inside. Next time, he must get Rex to stay back and keep watch at home while he heads off to the battlefield. Rex cradled Catherine in his arms. His actions and expression were very gentle, but his tone was extremely cold. Ruthless beasts are all lunatics. Ruthless beasts with targets are even crazier. They won't give up easily. Catching Stephen is just secondary. His primary target is Blair. Blair, sorry that you'll have to go through this, but you should stay in the village these few days. Toward the very end, Rex's tone sounded as if he ached for her. Blair nodded heavily. I know. In order to let her mates feel at ease, Blair waved her hand as if unconcerned, saying, I've had fun in the desert previously, and I'm fatigued anyway, so I can't be bothered to go out. My scorched feet are still feeling rough. It hurts even when I walk. Blair crossed her legs, placing one on top of the other, holding onto her soul that had a thick layer of dead scorched skin onto it. She was only intending to console her maids when she suddenly felt a little aggrieved. Roger quickly threw the roasted meat aside and grabbed onto her legs, his golden beast eyes glaring wide, filled with reproach, remorse, heartache, and other feelings. This pair of feet had been so soft in the past, just like cooked rice. However, they now seemed as if they were covered in a layer of hard and yellow husks. To think that your feet are burned so badly, why didn't you say so earlier? Roger's heart ached so much that he felt like crying. He raised Blair's foot and was planning on licking it. Blair almost fell back from this. Thankfully, Stephen was behind her, and she fell into his cooling embrace. Roger, we're about to eat meat. Don't touch my feet. Blair was caught between being angry and amused. However, Roger didn't listen to her and was still planning on licking her foot. Blair moved her foot a little to the side, but was unable to break free from his grip. She decided to just kick his face. Blair didn't use any force, and when that soft strength came into contact with his face, it didn't show any blame, but showed intimacy. Stephen and Rex appeared nervous as well. They had been busy dealing with the scorpion tribe over the past few days, so they didn't notice the abnormality on their mate's body. As her mates, they had failed. Stephen hugged Blair once again. Rex placed Catherine down by his side and took her other foot to take a look. When Blair saw that they were all so solemn, although she felt that she had been pampered too much that she had become too delicate, she couldn't bear to refuse them. She smiled and said, All right, since you are envious, then help me rub them. Both Roger and Rex rubbed one of her feet each. They must have been burned on the day Stephen fell unconscious, Rex thought back before saying. That was the only time Blair had walked under the scorching sun. She was no fool and wouldn't usually stand on the sand to have her feet burned. Stephen didn't have memories from that time. His expression became a little stunned. Then he furrowed his brows, feeling remorse. However, his lips couldn't help but arch up. It was really contradictory.